Welcome to the today's meeting, today's orchestra meeting. Um, I guess the biggest topic is uh, the SSH orchestrator. Um, there was some some issue issues last um, y yesterday with respect to a failing shaman run and um, and the documentation wasn't built correctly. Um, so it's fixed now, and hopefully uh, we can have a or we can merge our SSH orchestrator today if uh, the QA cool. run is is run successfully. Well, that's exciting. Um, I've um, shared my development environment in the other pad. It's um, let me paste it in the chat here. It's um, based on the CentOS version done by uh, Noir, um, but with Ubuntu Bionic. Um, I haven't le yet looked into getting that on, on SUSE. Yeah. And it worked perfectly well, uh, even though it was never actually tested on Ubuntu, and um, I was able to deploy OSDs uh, and connect it, connect them to the cluster. So I'm I'm really happy how that went well, how that went. Cool. Um, yeah. If the SSH orchestrator then is uh, merged, then I'm 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 really happy about that. Um, yeah. Next thing, um, Ceph Orchestrator wait. Um, so the in a way that you can um, pause or um, not actively wait for uh, the completions completions to finish, but um, suspend the execution of the uh, command handler and. Um, then resume uh, the completion of the command handler when when calling wait. That will then, in the end, call um, the wait function of the orchestrator. Then um, I'm I'm not sure about the error handling um, because um, if you are having multiple orchestrator completions and some of them finish successfully, some of them finish with an internet error, and some of them finish with, for example, and returning a multiple, uh, a multi status result is um, not easy um, and not that straightforward. Um, yeah. Yes, I, I understand what uh, what you say, uh, Sebastian. Well, I I, I was uh, taking a look to the to the review in this moment. Okay, mm -hmm. to your review. Mm -hmm. ah, it's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. I I like it. Okay, but uh, well, I I think that uh, we we should. Uh, I think that uh, in the case of the orchestrator uh, white method, uh, well. Mm, we we should uh, be uh, only focused in uh, make progress in the operations, okay? And when uh, the operation has finished, it, we, we we can uh, finish the operation in, in two states. The the operation has finished it successfully, okay? Mm -hmm. So we are going to fill the the completion uh, attributes, and if we have one error. Uh, maybe we, we should uh, fill uh, the the step on attribute the is error at attribute and this is all because is the client of the orchestrator the the one that uh, the the element that uh, should uh, process this information i i don't think that uh, in the wait method we we should uh, return any kind of 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 error because uh, 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 what you are going to have is several kind, different uh, multiplayer uh, result and and different uh, uh, 
uh, status errors. So I think mm -hmm. that for me, the wait method is only for make uh, operations to progress. And then in the in the completion object, then I think that we should have the result of the operation. And is the client of the uh, uh, the consumer of the completion object uh, the responsible of uh, making uh, any decision with the with the result of the of the operation? Mm -hmm. Because we have different kind of uh, orchestrators and different kind of completions with different results, so I think that it is going to be difficult to to solve this in in the weight method. Yeah, maybe I don't know yet. <clears throat> um, one um, thing that was in my mind is that. Um, You, using exceptions in Python is in general a good way, um, but having kind of uh, multiple statuses in, in different exceptions and some of them are successful is not really that compatible with, uh, with the way exceptions are supposed to be. Yeah, maybe maybe raising an exception here is uh, just does not work perfectly. Um, yeah, we'll look into that. Mm. Yeah, that's it from side. Right. Um, question on the, the Ceph orchestrator weight thing that you've got there, That that's um. That's a change to how the the CLI works, right? Not no, to the no, no? not not per default. But you can add minus minus weight equals false. Ah, okay, yeah. And and then uh, it's supposed to return immediately. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I think I think that's 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 very useful to to have at the CLI, so that then you can, um, you know, not necessarily block. Um. Yeah, um, it, it, it provides a way to create multiple OSCs on multiple servers at the same time, basically. Mm. Yeah. Um. If, um, if the orchestrator itself do that internally. Mm. Yeah, cool. So one one big challenge that I've uh, had uh, with the orchestrator wait is that, um, for example, um, some some CLI commands um, print out JSON or convert the result into JSON or convert it into some pretty plain text, and yeah. um, this code uh, does not stick to the uh, to the completion completion object but it needs to live somewhere in the uh, CLI in the CLI module and uh, yeah so just storing the uh, completion object enough for me so I had to uh, also suspend the computation of the command handler um, that Makes it a bit more complicated. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's annoying. Um, there is also a um, a CLI handler that actually does multiple calls. Um, let me have a look. I, I think it's um, create OSD or create service. I don't know. Um, it first gathers all hosts, and then it makes, an, makes another call to add the specific service. And um, 
Yeah, that is also not really compatible to only storing the completion handlers. Mm, so, okay. Um, in 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 what part? I don't know. Um, yeah, if if you look into, um, for example, create OSD, um, it's okay. um, this a function here. Um, it first um, gathers all hosts. It calls self dot get hosts, um, waits for the completion, and then afterwards it creates the OSD. And uh, the storing the completion handler does not really solve the problem of properly returning immediately if you synchronously wait for uh, for the host. But anyway, that's um, I, I think I've solved the problem. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see. It's it's um, getting the host waiting for that completion and then going and yeah, you might want to sort of reusing itself internally, I guess. Um. And one other problem is that the completions are not really uh, composable. Um, because they do not work as uh, um, as futures, which can be chained much better than the completion that we have right now. Okay. So you cannot call an orchestrator function within an orchestrator function. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess probably that was, that just wasn't considered when the original API was put together. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done anything with futures myself, I think. Anyway. Okay, I, I I think that I I need more time <laughs> in order to to assume all the changes. Okay, so uh, well I I prefer to to study okay and and to and to return you uh, well to to make in the in the pull request okay uh, mm -hmm. comments okay. I think that uh, well in this case well. Maybe it, it, I, I think that uh, I need to study more uh, your code, okay, in order to to be all all the all the implications, mm -hmm. all the things that okay. you say, okay. I will take a look and answer in in the pull request, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is that you have a, <laughs> a, a, a particular version of all the operators <laughs> in your repository, maybe. <laughs> Sebastian, <laughs> you have done all the work <laughs> before us <laughs> and you are doing, no, no, <laughs> make this in this way. No, it's, it's awesome, it's awesome, your, your work, perfect. Okay. You guys want to share about your progress about the um, about Ansible and Dipsy? Well, in in my case, not not too much progress. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, well, I I have playing with the uh, with the integration test. Okay. But uh, well, uh, it it uh, yesterday it. Uh, it was uh, well the, the question of the authentication in uh, the Ansible Runner service uh, arose uh, again. 
okay uh, well i i have uh, probably uh, we, uh, we are going to start with uh, modifications in the ansible runner service in order to provide a tls mutual authentication and uh, well i will do the uh, this change and the and the integration test in, in parallel but yesterday i, I was uh, with the with the ansible runner service uh, most of the time so mm -hmm. no 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 too much uh, progress with the, with my part okay perfect Um, and for for deep sea, I actually have deep sea now enabling the um, the deep sea orchestrator module and configuring it. Um, I haven't got a pull request open for that yet, but I've got it working in my um, development environment. Um, I was having a um, I was having an interesting problem where um, uh, this is what I mentioned um, separately to you, Sebastian, on that call the other day, where when DeepSea deploys Def, it deploys the Mons, and then it deploys the Managers, and then I was immediately at that point telling, I was having DeepSea invoke um, Ceph Manager Module Enable Orchestrator CLI, and Ceph mm -hmm. Manager Module Enable DeepSea. I know I don't have to do Orchestrator CLI anymore because that's already enabled now, but um, the problem I was having is if you start the Ceph Manager daemon and then you immediately run Ceph Manager module enable whatever module name, mm -hmm. um, Ceph Manager itself hasn't yet loaded any modules at that point. So it's possible to do it too too quickly. Um, and I found a way around that. If I run um, Ceph Manager dump in a loop um, and look for um, the available field there, available gets set to true once Ceph Manager is actually running and has the modules loaded. Mm -hmm. So I can actually, I can, I can in in the salt state that does the deployment and everything, I can put a little loop in there that spins, you know, sleeping um, uh, for one second on every loop iteration, um, effectively just polling Ceph Manager dump to wait until it becomes available and then I can proceed with enabling and configuring the module so I have this um, this actually works now um, it made me wonder if we if there would be any sense in having a Ceph manager command that you could run you know Ceph manager is available or something like that to know if it was completely started up um, so why why does it work for the dashboard then because but, but the Ceph manager is already running when the dashboard's running. I mean, um, the I've I've just if if you're using the dashboard, um, all of Ceph manager's modules are already loaded, so the dashboard can talk to any anything it wants. I'm with Deep Sea. Um, I've I've only just the Ceph Manager daemon has only just started and it hasn't loaded any of its modules yet. Um, and in that mm. one or two seconds before Ceph Manager has completely finished starting, like when, when you run system control start Ceph Manager, that returns immediately um, with success, even though Ceph Manager itself has not yet. Um, so the Ceph Manager process is running, but it hasn't actually loaded um, uh, it hasn't finished iterating through what modules are on disk to even find out what modules are available yet. Mm -hmm. um, so it's possible at that point in time, I've I've just deployed Ceph Manager and now I want to enable some modules and I can't yet because I have to wait a couple of seconds for Ceph Manager to actually have loaded um, itself properly. That sounds familiar. Um... I, I have seen uh, certain times that uh, when you restart, uh, when you enable and disable one of the modules, uh, this module is not available uh, available Im immediately. But if you issue uh, one comma one command, this command is is uh, finally processed. Um. I, I know that Sage added uh, a minus minus force flag to set module options, manager module options. 
Yeah. Because of that race condition that um, the module might not actually be enabled yet and you want to already uh, change uh, some some options of a specific module. Um, okay. And there he added a minus minus force flag. Um, yeah, I, I saw a force. Sorry, go on. Yeah, that was especially in the vstarter.sh uh, script. Okay, that so I could, yeah, I could use force to enable the DeepSea module and then I wouldn't need my little loop. Um, um, hmm. Yeah. I'll um I'll do I'll experiment with force instead of having my loop for checking def manager dump um and whether it's available to see if that works for the config set things that I'm doing. Um this this would this mm, yeah, I'll 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 do some experiment with force, and then possibly I'll I might I might write this up in an email because it would it would be perhaps slightly clearer if I can um, show some the 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 salt code that I've got and and put in the the timing and where the error messages come from. Mm. Um, actually, I think we start uh, adds the dashboard module to the uh, self.conf. Ah, yeah, okay. That would that would make it um, that would make it be there first already. Um, I could do that. I could do that with Deep C as an alternate. Um, Um, except I sort of I sort of thought we try to we wanted to try to move away from doing putting things in ceph.conf and go to in general. So um, I'll yeah, take some notes. Um, it 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 maybe adding that um, with a ceph. What was it called? Set config or was was ceph? Yeah, yeah. something like yeah ceph ceph whatever it is config. Set rather than using calling into the module that's not loaded yet might do it. Mm. Um, that might be a workaround. I don't know. Yeah. Manage initial modules is it, as far as I can see. Yeah. Modules. Um. Anyway, to, okay. So to summarize, I have something now that that does enable the Deep Sea orchestrator module when Deep Sea deploys Ceph. Um, it may not be um, my little loop in there to to make it work is possibly may or may not be the cleanest thing. And so I'll try a couple of other things with with force and and config set to see if I can make that a bit neater. But um, uh, yeah, now that that's in place, I can try to um, uh, see if I can add some. I can I can see if I can try to do something about having Deep Sea test the orchestrator module inside itself somehow downstream. So um, I'll uh, look at that next. Okay. Then, do we have other topics? I don't think so. Yeah. Then, see you guys. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Hi, Celestia. Hi, team. Bye.